Yes, yes, yes. It is what it is. Ladies and gentlemen. All right. Hey, what's going on, y'all? This is the Soapbox Podcast. Welcome. I'm your host, TJ Legacy, and I am here with my crew, my family. What's good? I'm here all the way from New York City. What's going on? Young Ginger Ale, how you feeling? Listen, listen, you know, I'm feeling decent. Uh, right now, we're live. If you're watching us on YouTube, if you're not, you know the playoffs is on. My magic is down just a smidgen. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm getting through it right now. So you What's know. a smidgen, man? <laughs> uh, be be 20, honest with the people. 20, What's a smidgen? 20. 20. 20 is not a smidgen. So 20 you, is almost... So 20 is really... The controller down. But you got to think, 20 is really 10. Because two points. So they only really down 10 field goals. You feel me? Oh, I'm glad you said that. Because today's show is about being truth tellers. And that was a flat out lie right there. But I'm going to hit it up with everybody else. Uh, all the way from Brockton, Boston, the lady of the north. What's going on? Jesse, what's popping? What's popping, everybody? How you guys doing? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? How you been? I've been good, you know, chilling, living life, washing my hands, Allen, and wearing my mask. That's what's up. See, that's that's all we could ask for. Influence and and, and uh, the in the cheetah print. What's good? We have Giovanni. What's up? what's good, Giovanni? How you doing? Hey y'all, what's happening? Yes, all cheetah. I'm trying to make sure that everything looks even because all these designs make stuff look lopsided. But I'm here. <laughs> nah, nah, we're we're good. Hey, I am. Uh, I'm glad that we're here. This is. Um, it's been a good week. Um, a lot of stuff has been going on. Um, here in Orlando, we had or in Florida, we had the the elections pop off. Uh, shout out to everybody that watched our, you know, the endorsements, my endorsements that I had. Um, so we had like 50 percent of the people that won. Um, that we endorsed won. And then we also had uh, in 100% of the endorsements of the people that won were, were women. So shout out to shout out to the people who won. Um, please read the writing on the wall that uh, there's a wave of black women that are going to be in leadership and uh, they, they're running for these positions and they're, and they're doing well. Shout out to Monique Worrell, who won state attorney uh, for uh, Osceola and Osceola. In Orange, in Orange County, she won the Democratic primary. Now we're moving forward to the general uh, election. So uh, it's been real. It's been a, it's been a week. It's been a week, y'all. Um, and I wanted to, yo, know, last week we were supposed to do. We everybody who's listening, we we promoted this interview with Young Scholar on on Instagram. Just say, how was the interview? <laughs> the interview was superb. It was a great. It was a great interview that. Unfortunately, no one's going to be able to hear because I had some phone issues, right? I am team Android. I've been team Android. I'm sorry. What was, what was that just said? You said something? All right. Oh. Just saying. Yes. So Jesse, uh, she's got some static or whatever. She may be, we may, we may lose Jesse in, in a second for, for talking about my Android. But anyway, listen, it was a dope interview, but it, it somehow got erased before I could capture it. Um, so I had to get a brand new phone, do an IG. So I'm not a hipster like that. So, but one thing I will say is that um, the interview was so dope, but he talked, I, I remember him talking to me about his uh, interaction with Jamie Foxx. I don't know if you guys who watched the interview, um, he said that he, he went up to Jamie Foxx, right? And was trying to show Jamie Foxx a lot of love. And Jamie was like, he was like, yo, man, I'm a big fan of you or whatever, you know, all, all positive, all positivity. And then Jamie was like, yo, get this man out of here and basically escorted him out of the VIP area. And so that sullied his whole mood with the whole Jamie, with Jamie Foxx, right? Um, with me, I met one of my influencers. Again, Corey Holcomb was one of my influencers. You guys who watch the show or listen to the show, I always talk about Corey Holcomb because I look at Corey Holcomb as a truth teller. And so, and I look at myself as a, as a truth teller and that's basically what the soapbox has been, has been based on. However, you know, I went over to the Orlando Improv that opened up, shout out to the Orlando Improv, shout out to uh, TJ Chapman, who's been on the show with Morgan. 
And, you know, saw his show. His show was good. It was okay. And then afterwards, we were standing off to the side, and he was like, he saw, he saw me. He was like, hey, what's up, man? How you doing? I was like, yo, can I get about, you know, five to ten minutes, whatever? I'm not trying to press you or nothing like that. He's like, yo, as soon as this all clears out of here, I'm coming out. Bet. And I was like, all right, cool. You know, show love. And then afterwards, he, um, to make a long story short, he kind of put his manager on me. And was like, hey, you know, we'll exchange numbers, yada, yada, yada. And I'm like, all right, I'm not going to press the issue. He don't want to do an interview after he got off stage. I get it. He was like, yo, I'm going to go on Zoom, you know, all this other good stuff. His manager was like, yo, I'm going to make I'm gonna make sure he does it. Bet. I was like, all right, cool. You know, I tried to take people at their word. The next day, called him, didn't pick up. Me and the manager texted him, was like, hey, this is what it is. What time is he available? And here's what got me, right? He was like. Corey wants to know if this interview was for you or if it's for the Orlando Sentinel. And I was like, both, right? Because what I do is I will write it, watch the show, write it, write a, uh, in the Central Florida 100 about it or an article about it. And then I will, uh, and then we will interview them and have a, have a conversation. So my thing is, is if you didn't want to do the interview, right? Just be like, nah, I don't want to do the interview, right? Just, and I'm cool with that. There have been times people say, I don't want to do the interview. However, I had, they, what, what happened is what really got me, I wouldn't say mad, but it really enlightened me to how people in Hollywood uh, act, right? Where you may watch their show, and I think that's the difference between us. Like, we are who we are on this show, right? And I make sure that you guys, we are all authentic. Would y'all all agree? Yes. I don't think do I, I never ask y'all to put on a fake face or whatever. I say, yo, be you. If y'all agree, disagree. I say all the time, if we disagree with some of the content that you're talking about, I was like, yo, say it, say you don't <laughs> want to talk about, you know, I give my co host the green light to be truth tellers. Right. And so with Corey, the fact that as a young black man, who's in, who's in black media, you want to make sure that if I'm interviewing you, that I'm interviewing you for a white media outlet, I think that's kind of bogus because that's not how you come off. You come off as a dude that's real thorough, a dude that's like for the people or for, you know, pro-black, whatever, right? But you don't want, you want to make sure that if I'm interviewing you, that it's for the white media outlet. What difference does it make? I had to, I'm telling y'all, I had to give, the reason I'm telling y'all this is funny because I had to give more credentials to Corey Holcomb's manager than I did for Val Demings and some of these other people who I have interviewed. Like I talked to Hughley, Mad Love sat down, Godfrey, all these other comedians, but for re, but it's always, they always tell you not to meet your idols, right? And I just mm-hmm. idolized dude, but I was influenced by him. And so I tell you all this story because it was a bit disappointing. So we didn't get Corey Holcomb like we wanted to. Um, but I just can't support. I won't support man anymore. And it's not for me to be. I'm not. There's no axe to grind. There's no whatever. I use stuff like that as motivation because our rule on the soapbox is what? Who we don't get now, we'll get later. You see what I'm saying? And so um, my thing is, is if you didn't want to do the interview, just say you don't want to do the interview. Like point blank, don't don't sit there and say that oh, we're gonna come back because when it comes to white media outlets, they don't do that. Celebs don't do that. But for some reason, when you get to a certain level of celebrity status or who you are, now it's like oh, I gotta check your freedom papers. And I think that's kind of I think that's kind of bogus. And when I do give you all my credentials, then you don't even hit me back up and say, you know, say anything. So that was my experience. For those, I'm still influenced by a shout out to TJ Chapman. TJ Chapman was with me as well. Um, we, you know, as black independent black media, we was there uh, enjoying ourselves. But yeah, man, I think, um, I think, dude, that was kind of, I think that was kind of bogus to do. And for somebody that literally was like, yo, I'm I'm a black man in media trying to make it like you. Yes, you came up in the comedy, in the comedy circuit, but I'm out there actually in my community. The same dudes that Corey Holcomb talks about, like, Yo, people got to be in the community, putting in work, all sorts of stuff. I'm that dude. You see what I'm saying? And for you to sit there and be like, yo, I'm not going to, you know, 
oh, let me check your credentials. Who are you to make it seem like I'm doing something fraudulent or whatever? Like, it's all good. I'm going to let you have it. So that was my experience. And I wanted to ask y'all, have y'all ever had an experience with anybody who you have necessarily like idolized or someone that you looked up to, but they kind of blew you off? Because I have, that's happened. Go ahead, Jess. I had an experience like that on Instagram. It's not that I necessarily idolized her. It's just um, I, I would watch her videos. She's an Instagram influencer and she happens to be Cape Verdean mixed with some other stuff. Mm -hmm. So I, I sent her a message to see like if we can collaborate and work together. This was like a year ago. And yeah. but before I asked her like um, if we could work together, like we were just messaging each other. We were talking about how both of our parents were from Cape Verde and different parts of Cape Verde. And then I asked her like if she would be willing to like collaborate and do a video together. And she said, yes, yeah. she said yes, that she would be willing to do it. And then when it came time to do it, she never wrote me back. She really? Like, yeah, she never wrote me back. She like ignored me like completely. I was like, okay, well, that's real. <laughs> Why do you think that is? Do you think it's like that she was intimidated? No, I don't think it's she was intimidated at all. Like it's because she has a certain level of followers and she probably just, at that time, I didn't have as much followers as I have now. Um, so she probably just didn't want to work with me because my numbers weren't up there. But don't say you're going to do something and then not do it. That was freaking fake. Yeah, that's real. That's real. Bold. Alan, what about you? Um, I don't necessarily have a story like that. Um, I would like to, before I chime in, I do want to um, see if Giovanni has... Oh. Oh my gosh, they're losing. <laughs> they're losing, Alan. It's okay. Be present. No, no, no. I'm here. I'm just, I, I was just before I like ask y'all. Trying to put it on Giovanni. I just want to make sure that Giovanni is Giovanni's straight. She's listening. She's waiting for her. Time. Yeah, I, I, just, like, you know, I don't have I don't have a story like that, but I have questions about you guys. I like I have follow up questions about you guys' experience. Oh, oh so you want to pass up to Giovanni? Story like that. Story first. Go ahead, Giovanni. I have a similar story like that. Uh, me reaching out to somebody who is an um, big time anchor. Uh, okay, mm -hmm. well, let me tell you a couple of times, not even a couple of times, but um, sometimes I've had, I have had those people who they write you and your Instagram, like social media and want you to, you know, can you share this, post that, and then when you write something to them, all of a sudden they don't respond, you know, those type of... Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I've had situations like that, one, um, and so then, you know, I just stopped answering their messages, but um, and then I also have been in a situation where I asked um, someone in a higher position, a higher position to me for advice, and they were just more so like on a complete different mindset of what I would think a black woman would have voiced. And I was mm. disappointed to the point what do you where mean by I that? Said, what, did they, what did they say? Did they say okay, like, so I, okay, so I don't know if y'all know, I don't know if y'all remember, but a while while ago, um, I posted this video um, of me and Noble and we were dancing. It was a TikTok video and we were dancing. Yes, um, I remember And that. so then I received a message from someone one of my followers or i guess yeah someone of you know just saying hey you know i don't think that was professional you need to take that off your your social media and so i was just like 365 days out of the year y'all see me having a little phone with my son one time and yeah, now yeah, yeah. i'm a hoochie mama you know or whatever um mm -hmm. and so i was i mean i was shook like oh my gosh like hope I don't lose my job like did I just really do something that was so offensive or people took it the wrong way like why are you even dancing with your son oh okay so anyway so I reached out I reached out to a reporter and I just asked her you know the balance how do you balance it um yeah and also considering the fact that on my Instagram not only am I a reporter in my professional life but in my additional life because I have a life outside of my job yeah. um I you know I do my own thing I'm motivational I'm I'm a person. Yeah. So anyways, I asked someone about it and she gave me her perspective. Like, yeah, I would, I wouldn't do that. Um, just because you never know what someone else is thinking. Got it. Um, but then she followed up in another email and quite frankly, I, I wouldn't be dancing with my son like that in my personal life. Um, either. So I don't know 
you know what your intentions were, but you need to get it together. Like it was just. Oh, oh they had like a they had an intervention. Huh? <laughs> they had I an was intervention just for like, you. Wow, somebody really stole your freedom. Um, but I was just like, what I'm. This is that's just called uh, having a sense of humor. What I yeah. what I was doing with my son. So mm -hmm. if you don't have one of those, you know, that's personal. I ask for your opinion, which means I don't have to necessarily follow your opinion, but yeah. thank you, you know, for giving your advice. Just because you have an opinion don't mean it's right. Yeah. And it, yes, yeah, so I was just, I was just like, oh, okay, yep, the, the people didn't got you. You up there. They got yeah. you. No, you know what the thing is, even when I, when it comes to Corey, it's like, yo, dude, dude, I took a picture of dude the first time when he came in uh, last year. Uh, it was very cordial, whatever. Uh, I know he does. And so I'm not making excuses for dude. But what I'm saying is, and I didn't have a problem with him at the club saying, yo, I'm going to come out and when everything's cleared out. And then he sent his manager out because he didn't have to do that. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. What I, my issue, what I had a problem with was, especially in the black media space, when you request my credentials and you request information as to clearance, as to, Dude, I'm I'm sending you my art. You from LA, or you from you live in LA, but you live you from Chicago. I'm sending you my article that you wrote that I wrote in the LA Times. Like I'm mm. sending you my credentials that I'm a professional journalist. Like this ain't no like BS. Like a, you know, started with we may not have the thousands and thousands of views, but you know the 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 quality of shit that the soapbox produces is is at this early stage. We're at episode sixty four. I would put us together up with any other podcast starting out within 64 episodes. I'm very, I'm that much more confident as far as the shit that we're doing and the impact that we're having. And I'm not saying that he's got to kiss my ass because of any of that local shit, but as, as a man, if we're talking about as, as, you know, as men, right. If you represent something on this screen and I'm going to tell y'all, this is my promise to the people on. So if I represent something, on the soapbox, that's what the fuck it is. That's who I'm going to actually be. And I think with being a truth teller, because when I talked to him the first time, he was like, yo, you know, just keep telling the truth. Keep being, keep, you know, you know, swimming upstream, that kind of thing. Like, yo, keep telling the truth. That's who I am 24 seven, right? Regardless of like, I, there are times that I've taken up issues or said things that people are like, yo, I don't, I wouldn't necessarily do that or think that it's going to affect my career, similar to what Giovanni says, but I'm the one that's doing that and holding people's feet to the fire. Ain't nobody going to Val Demons and asking her straight point blank, yo, let's talk about your excessive force history as chief of as chief of police and, and holding her feet to the fire, straight up. You see what I'm saying? So, mm -hmm. you know, I, I say I say that story, not to rag on Corey Holcomb, whatever, you know, I just know where to put my money elsewhere. I know, you know, um, cause the same thing with Steve Harvey, Steve Harvey, when I met Steve Harvey, he was bogus as fuck too. Steve Harvey was real bogus and he didn't, yeah, he didn't care. I met Steve Harvey. Uh, what was it? 2000 and it had to be 2009 when I was doing something called speak Orlando, which is basically templates to what we're doing right now. And in front of the, in front of the white media outlets, he was Mr. Hightower, you know, Kings of comedy, Steve Harvey. And I'm like, yo, I'm excited. Like, yeah. yeah. But I had, it was me and my homegirl, Nelly, who was in my class. It was for school. And we had our camera. And we were out there. We had credentials. We were out there interviewing, getting our chops, getting your feet wet. Steve Harvey comes around and was like, say, brother, who are you? And I was like, oh, I'm with, you know, with Speak Orlando. So want to interview. So in the line, you stand up with the media in the back. Have you ever been uh, to some of these events? You stand up, you go in the back, and the media has, you do media blitzes, right? And so Steve Harvey went, yucked it up, survey set, all of a sudden, you know, family feud, Steve Harvey for everybody on camera. Walks straight by, wait, walks straight by us. Goes into his, goes into his dressing room. So then he has his handler come out with his three-piece suit on with the top hat. And was like, listen, man, I know you're a young brother that you want to, you want to make it in this business and stuff like that. But, you know, I wouldn't go nowhere. I would stay out here. So, yo, I stayed out. This is younger me. I stayed out there probably, me and her, probably for about an hour, an hour and a half until Steve Harvey was ready to leave just to get Steve Harvey to do a drop. But it was like, I got to check your freedom papers. I got to know who you are before or your credentials 
you gotta, you know, you gotta be twice as good before I go ahead and do an interview with you. And I think sometimes people forget where they come from and who they are. So um, that was my Steve Harvey story. Young Scholar had a story about Jamie Foxx. I had a story about, uh, that's my story about Corey Holcomb, but I use all that shit for motivation. I didn't let the Steve Harvey shit stop me. Definitely okay. not gonna let the Corey Holcomb shit stop me. And I'm gonna go out here and keep telling the truth. And I'm not saying this stuff to uh, have, you know, disparaging comments about Corey Holcomb. I still think he's a talented dude. But my thing is, is that as a man, when it comes to like, res when it comes to respect and in a professional space, I, I have to tell the truth to say that that shit was real bogus. And I have to tell the truth to be like, yo, there will come a time on this platform where we cross, where we cross, where we cross paths again. And so, um, and I'll just leave, and I'll just leave it, I'll leave it at that. So, but yeah, Alan, you said you had some questions about it? No, yeah, so, well, I mean, in your situation, I guess with both, with both Corey Holcomb and Steve Harvey, um, how do you feel, or do you feel it is, and, you know, I have, I have what I think about it, but do you think it's fair to completely hold that person accountable for what their management may be doing as a better a vetting and or hierarchy process of who they're going to allocate the time to. Because no, I think okay. In, in your case, you are coming with all of this experience, all of this credentials, all of this background as far as being that person in the community, and you know that within yourself. But mm -hmm. when you're approaching someone and you're approaching someone's management. Yeah. They don't know anything outside of this is person 423 who wants to interview in this city. And I'm not saying, you know, no. of course, you know, he asked you to send all the information, which yeah. is not, I wouldn't even necessarily call it freedom papers. It's just that, you know, if you are a celebrity who is demanding time for from a sea of people, mm -hmm. you know, I guess they have their strategy of who they should be issuing. So are you going to hold that against Corey or do you believe his management team should be a no. uh, better in that? And I, I, I guess moving forward, I guess, do you feel like since we are a, uh, and you are a young black journalist, should yeah. celebrities always make sure that, you know, despite whatever happens that they have some sort of, for lack of a better term, affirmative action plan that whatever happens, I'm gonna at least give a couple of black independent journalists mm -hmm a shot at this time mm -hmm. because you know i mean i think it is uh just coming from a if, if i'm a, a manager standpoint I, it may not be fair to compare uh the orlando sentinel to any other independent outlet who may not mm -hmm. have that audience <clears throat> just i'm just talking yeah. about time allocation yeah all right i'm glad you asked that question right and it's and it's a packed question so i'm a, so i'm gonna break kind of break it down so um when he said he didn't want to do the interview at the comedy club, right? Well, no, he didn't say he didn't want to do the interview. He, his manager came out and was like, he don't want to do the interview right now, but let me get your information. I didn't ask the manager, hey, can I get your information? Can I do it in press? I didn't press. One thing about me, my style is different. I don't press. If I ask one time, I'm not going to beg you. Hey, would you like to do an interview? Can I get five to 10 minutes with you? He came over to me, right? I didn't go over to him. He came over to me, recognized me from last time. So I, I wasn't tripping off of that, right? What I do, and so the manager asked me, gave me his phone, asked me to put his number, my information in. And I was like, all right, cool. He was like, yo, I'm going to make sure he does it tomorrow. All I could do is take you at your word. Next day, I did my due diligence, right? Uh, I called, he didn't pick up. I did text, was like, yo, this is me. When is he available, right? He said, the text I got back was, Corey wants to know, is this for you or this is for things? So I basically sent the text message laying out the whole process of what I do. On top of that, I sent them interviews that we did with comedian Tony Rock, D.L. Hughley, Godfrey, uh, all the different other comedians kept on stage that we did for the soapbox. So he's comfortable to know this is what we do, right? On top of that, I can say, I sent him the clip. So I sent him a lot of different, I sent him some stuff or whatever. The manager's like, bet. So I don't think it was a man, uh, a management thing. The management wanted him to do it. The young dude, I think it's Maurice, wanted him to do the interview. He, when we last let off, was like, yo, all right, bet. I said, yo, I'm, we're just an independent media outlet like you. But the reason I, I go to the comedy club 
these comedians have authentic commentary on everything. They have no filter. That's what the soapbox is about, telling the truth on whatever pop culture or current events that's going on. Um, and for me to write it in the Sentinel, a lot of times these artists, these people who are black, these are black comedians, always talk about how they don't get mainstream exposure, right? They don't get mainstream exposure. You don't have media outlets. If I don't go to the Sentinel, me, if I don't go to the comedy club and write about black comedians coming into Orlando, Florida and what they're talking about and what they represent, guess what? None of the other media outlets are gonna cover them. So guess what? If, you, if I don't use my platform to say, hey, these black comedians are coming to the Orlando Improv, guess what? Next time they try to show up, it may, don't take anything for granted. So I'm trying to make sure that, hey, our culture is, is, being, is being presented at the Orlando Improv, right? So that's the reason why that's the reason why I do it. Now, on top of that, yeah, do I get an interview, an exclusive interview for the soapbox to help us build our brand and and to get their commentary? Of course, because these are people that you know, DL Hughley, you look up when you were kids that you look up to, right? So that's why we do the that's why we do the things that uh, that we do. So it's not it wasn't management. This was a decision that he made, and I'm not mad at the decision that he made. What my thing is is that. I'm not going to portray myself on my platform as someone and then do something different behind the scenes, right? So you can't call people out for, you know, Hollywood and oh they oh they Hollywood and blah 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 blah. I listen to his show. I watched his show 5150. So you can't be that person on on screen, but then when you get a chance to be interviewed by the same black people that are supporting you, right? So it was not somebody like, this is my like third show or some shit like that. You see what I'm saying? Like people who are supporting you. <laughs> I didn't ask, I didn't ask him for an hour interview. I asked, you know, five <laughs> to 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. You bullshit, you bullshitting somebody's DM for longer than that. Mm -hmm. you see I saying? know, I know what you mean. Yeah, I know. So what it's mean. not so so, but it's not me, it's not me crying over over that. There will be other interviews, there'll be. As many, Rick Singh taught me this. He said, you got to get to your yes, right? And so you you have it's a it's a formula. How many no's you have to have people tell you no so you can get to your yes in success, right? So anytime you come up to somebody and you ask them for, you know, for whether it's for help, whether it's for anything that you um, whether it's for anything that you have um, that you try to be successful at, and they tell you no. It's only bringing you closer to that yes and closer to that open door of that opportunity. You see what I'm saying? So that's that's it. That's basically that's basically it. Yeah. Yeah. That's what Shelly fan. Shelly, I'm Shelly fan fan is commenting, telling me to come on the show. Shelly, I'm doing our show right now. <laughs> like, come on, go on my show. I will definitely come on your show, Shelly. Uh, Shelly fan. Uh, Shelly fan fan fix my life. I'm sure that'll be a. A great episode as you you know that Shelly's just trying to get me to cry on camera. That's all she's trying to do. That's all she wants. Yes. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Hey, so let's move. Hey, let's move. Uh anybody got any last things to say about that? But we could just move forward. Nope, we good. Onward Hard and upward. Onward and upward, yes. Uh yo, Jesse, what's uh <sighs> What's popping with the you, with your with your girl Cardi? What's not popping? She debuted number one with WAP with her and Meg Thee Stallion because you know they're popping. But you know a lot of y'all y'all are hating. You know a lot of male. You know y'all y'all just feel some type of way that women are actually embracing their sexuality. Will be mad. They're number one, and there's nothing you could do about it. Oh man! Oh, that was a lot, that was a lot that was a lot of spice. Oh, what did we do? Did we do something? No. Not you guys. Oh, yeah. no. Well, I mean, I'm I'm all for um, you know, I'm not a big fan of Cardi B. I I've said that on the show. I know you are. Don't talk but, about the um, City Girls. You wasn't a fan of the City Girls. What do you say? I thought it was you not a fan of the City Girls. Oh, I don't listen to the City Girls, except when oh. they're like in the club. I I I like girls who listen to City Girl music. But I don't, <laughs> I don't necessarily, I'm not like by myself or in the car like, yo, 
pop in that city girls real quick. Let me go ride, <laughs> let me, let me go ride out. Like I'm not a I'm not a city girls fan. I can't sit there and say, is that weird for me, Alan, to say? Like I'm not a city girls fan. No, I don't think it's a what? Is, yeah, music is subjective. I, I don't even think the city girls would want you listening to city girls music. Right. Yeah, exactly. I think they just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they just said something about what broke, uh, about if, if you're a broke man, you can't have none of their, uh, right. you can't have no, no for JJ. I'm like, okay, I'm cool with that. I mean, listen, whole co- <laughs> listen, um, I'm cool. I don't knock the naked hustle. I'm cool with, you know, whole culture. If, they, if you want to pr- promote whole culture, okay, okay, that's, that's fine. You call it women's sexuality empowerment, whatever. Yeah. yeah why does it have I'm not, to be whole culture? Why does it have to be whole? Right. Who even made that name up? Whole. That's that's a good question. If you listen to the lyrics, they're literally saying there's some hoes in this house. So I'm not making this shit up. She's literally saying there's some hoes in this house. There's some whores in this house. Is oh, oh yeah, thing? that song. Yeah, they do say that in one of those songs. Yeah. I would so like is, to say that that song has had the greatest rebrand within the last two weeks ever because there's some whores in this house with some like nigga i will shoot you if you play that song around me because there's no whores in this house oh it's very weird rebrand is crazy there's some whores in this house yeah but i'm not a prude listen i remember staying up late i remember staying up late if they are then they're embracing that and that's why y'all are mad because you guys used to or men use that word to diminish women who like to have sex or like to just embrace their sexuality. So some women call themselves hoes and they're happy with being hoes. Let them be happy. I'm cool with you. I Listen, I Scout's I Honor. I'm cool with you, with any woman saying that they want to be, a, if they want to be a hoe with the naked hustle or whatever, I'm cool with that. However... What, I, what I'm saying is, when you're talking about, I'm a hoe, I'm a hoe, I'm a hoe, I'm a, I empower me, I'm a hoe, men ain't shit, let me get that bag, but whoop de, whoop de, whoop de, whoop. just don't come out here when things go awry, talking about this women, like you were part of the women's suffrage movement. Like, I don't like the either, the either or, like, you gotta pick a side, I pick a side, it's reality. I think women can't suffer if they're hoes. What are you saying? Well, I don't understand. Well, no, the women's suffrage movement is different, but right, no, so- I'm talking about if you're talking about just don't make it seem like this is about women empowerment. Don't make like I'm not buying into that. Why can't it be? Why? There's so okay, you do we want little girls what talking about they mom on my hoe? Well, they shouldn't be listening to that type of music. No, I'm not saying that they listen to the song. <laughs> I'm talking about I'm talking about the culture. I'm talking about the actual culture, right? I don't want my little, I'm never going to go to my little, like, and I know I may, this may be the bad guy, but I'm never going to go to my little nieces and be like, listen, if you want to be a hoe, you just go ahead and be the best hoe you can be. You go ahead out there and you hoe it up. Listen, if you want to twerk when you're of age, you go ahead and make them twerk videos in 2040. Ain't nobody can tell you nothing. I'm never going to encourage or empower a uh, hoe. Will I tell my will I tell my nieces to um, be mindful of her choices and whatever choices she makes, good or bad, she has to live with those decisions. Absolutely. But I'm never gonna be like, I'm not gonna be in her corner. Like you could go ahead and be the best hoe. You be the best hoe that you could possibly be. You I go think- out there and you make like I'm not. I'm not gonna buy her. Like I'm not gonna do that. But I think the thing with like sexual, the thing with sexual liberation is it is a spectrum, right? The same Alan, way that Alan, the same is, way that is, the, is, same, is, the same way that like Aisha Curry has her prerogative to be a Christian girl who has only been with Steph Curry all of her life. It's who a wants prerogative. other male attention. Who wants other men's attention for that? But that's a prerogative. But we're talking about prerogative, right? Attention and physical action is different. So I we, went to school, Alan went back to school, y'all. He's taking oh, so, you know, class. So the same way that Aisha Curry has a prerogative of being how she wants to be, a churchly godly woman or whatever. And mm-hmm. you have Cardi B, who also has her prerogative to be. I think that if we're t- going to be talking about the youth, I think the broader picture is like, do not, um, do not customize who you're going to be 
for the acceptance of males. I think that's the broader conversation as far as what we're telling young women. It, it doesn't have to be be a hoe. It doesn't hey, have to But here's my thing. If you over-sexualize yourself, like, right? You, whoever you want to be, because that's who you are personally, not because you want acceptance from the opposite. That's, but if you're prof, and that, like I said, I get all that. If you're profiting off of sexuality and sex sales, I get it. I was young. I stayed up late to watch BET Uncut tip drill video. I, 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 I'm not going to sit here and be a hypocrite. Right. All I'm saying is, all I'm saying is, if you are putting yourself out there, I'm a hoe, I'm a hoe, I'm a hoe. Oh, I'm, I'm going to just do this sexuality. I'm going to get what I can get, what I can get. And then men treat you like a hoe, right? Don't you be shocked and be like, oh my God, I can't believe you didn't treat me like with the respect of a, of a Southern belt. It don't work that way. That's but reality. That's, but that's, that's where the women And suffer. men know who to try. But that's where the women's suffrage movement comes in because how you act, quote unquote, on a record or who you are sleeping with or mm -hmm. how you, quote unquote, present yourself shouldn't estimate how a man, the, the scale of how a man respects you. You know what I'm saying? And that's where that's, Wait, but what, that's, that's, where that's not reality, though. It's not reality, no, but I'm just saying. I like how the two men are passionately debating each other about women's yeah. sexuality on the podcast. I'm saying that's like. Go ahead, Jabani. <laughs> it's not reality, but I'm saying that's like, that's what women are. That's the pushback that women are saying. Like, it doesn't yeah, matter yeah. what I do. It like, probably... I should still be treated with respect. You know what I'm saying? No, yeah, of course. But I think it probably will be the same thing for women. I mean, for men, like. I, that's almost like saying just because I have all um, gold teeth top and bottom with multiple chains and my pants sagging, don't don't you think I'm a thug? You right. know, and it's just like, uh, well, we don't know. Or don't you think I'm out here on the street? And he, and so I think perception, implicit bias, all of that stuff, like we automatically come with and it's just that's just the reality of it. So it's carried the way that you want to be seen or carried the way that you want to be, be treated. But at the end of the day, you, your appearance can sometimes treat people, make people, teach people how to treat you or, you know, uh, until they have a conversation with you, then they gonna, you know, that also treat, teaches them how to treat you. But if a person judging a book by its cover, we already know, like we learned that mm -hmm. in like second grade. <laughs> like, yeah. And, there, and dare I say, dare I say in this space, when we, when, when we are talking about social justice, right, in this current climate, when we're talking about social justice and we're talking about protect Black women and we're talking about trust Black women and we're talking about uh, locking up the, the race soldiers that murdered Breonna, Breonna Taylor, is, is, and we're talking about Kamala, uh, Kamala Harris, who is the uh, first ever African, well, first... She's the VP nom uh, VP nominee <laughs> for the Democratic for the Democratic Party. We'll get to we'll get to Kamala, but is this the right song for this time in this in this moment? Because it's like we're trying to black men and women are trying to uplift because of Sandra. But we're trying to uplift the image of black women, whatever black women and, and stuff like that. And then we got a, a jam with that's number one. Talk about. There's some hosts in this house. Huh? How about the music that black men are making? It, it goes both ways. Let's See, not. I don't like that argument. We talk about black. We talk about what right now? No, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you're gonna talk about one. Talk about all. Y'all. Yes, but, but guess what? If that song wasn't as hype as it is, y'all really wouldn't be mad right now. If no, 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 no. Do you think I dislike the video? Listen. <laughs> <laughs> Do you yeah. really think that I sat up there and said this is just. <laughs> This is just disgusting. <laughs> I, I can't believe this. This Mal you really think I watched that video like that? He was no. just like that looking no, at that video. Look how close. I was he like is. this. There was some <laughs> chips. Uh, <laughs> I didn't even watch it. Alan over there, sick. I was not watching it like that. You think I was a? You think I was offended? No, I'm not offended by it. But what I will say is this. When rappers in hip hop talk about killing and, and 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 shooting and stuff like that, we see that it eventually, whether it's uh, Six Nine, whether it's Bobby Schmurder, whether it's any of the list of host of rappers who rap about killing and stuff like that, they get they get their rap lyrics used against them in the court of law. Ti, all of them. So what they're saying in their lyrics 
are used to subjugate them in the eyes of the public. So if we're talking about both, then guess what? When it comes to women and their sexuality, especially black women, or in Cardi B's case, a, another woman of color, it is, it's of course going to be used as a way to say, wait a minute. And let's not, let's not discount the whole uh, music industry. They want, they're putting images out there for a reason. Am I, am I lying? Is that, is that not, is that, is that not like, we're not going to just make it seem like these are independent artists and people just happen to stumble upon, you know, why? It's, it's consumer driven for sure. Exactly. Who but the thing is, is that let's just not, let's, let's not fool ourselves. Right. Like, I don't like, and there was another girl from, I think the bad girls club who portrayed herself and it was like, I just don't like the fact that as soon as black women or any woman, actually black women or women of color get into a jam, right? Or something happens to them personally, then all of a sudden, all nobody protects black women. It's highly offensive for somebody like me who advocates for domestic violence awareness, who advocates to, who out here supporting uh, black women, whether they're in public office or doing speeches to make sure that white meat is off their necks. It's offensive to me that as soon as something goes awry, as soon as Megan Stallion gets a, a foot shot, then all of a sudden the entire narrative of all black men is, oh, black women are just not protective. And then they do the textbook, oh, let's get, Mal now they're gonna get the Malcolm X quote where it's like black women are the most unprotected women. And as I say, you know, we're gonna just tout that out there, but we won't tout out any other stuff Malcolm X said. He said a whole bunch of other shit, but we won't put that out there. It's just, we're, we, we try to move the goalpost when it comes to that conversation. But if you wanna make money off your sexuality, that's, that's fine. But don't make everybody, the, but, when they, but when someone treats you a certain way, that's a part of our personal responsibility, is it not? Am I tripping? No, I Is it not? I think it's a part of the person. The I don't think it's part of their personal responsibility. If another person is treating you that, if someone is treating you like shit, that's a part of their responsibility to not treat you like shit. No matter what. You, um, let me ask. I want to ask Jess. Jess, if a dude, if if there's a woman out, if there are girls out there, there's a girl who's out there twerking, boobs all out, you know, doing all sorts of sexual things, only fans, whatever. Does she get? This, the, do you think that she deserves the same respect? Does she, does she get the same respect as a girl who's going to school, doing what she has to do, you know, covered up, a little bit more conservative or whatever, in, in nature or whatever, but she still, she still has, she, like, I don't, I don't buy the whole idea that you, you have to exude sexuality just by being, by being naked. Okay, but why not get the same respect? And what do you mean, same respect from whom? From anybody, men or women, because let's not make it seem like men are the only ones who are judging. People in, as individuals, period. Like nobody's telling you to marry that person. Like just respect them. Why not? I don't understand. Just because someone decides they want to make an OnlyFans and that's how they choose to make their money, that's their life. That's what they mm -hmm. want to do. But you're not going to respect them because that's the choice that they made. Are they disrespecting you in any way? For me, I'm going to respect you regardless, unless you disrespect me, then you're going to get respect. If you respect me, I'm going to respect you. So I don't think it's right to say we shouldn't respect a, a woman who wants to be out there making porn. Let her do her. That's what she wants to do in her life. And, I'm, and like I said, I'm not judge. I'm not judging the fact that she, she makes porn once again. Do you think <laughs> I've never watched porn? Do you ever think <laughs> I've watched? You should not respect porn stars. I want a porn star on the show so bad. Like I, I, I welcome, I welcome the opportunity to talk with, uh, to talk with a porn star. Like I, like I welcome that, you know. But let's let's be honest. You're a porn star, and I and I would say this too. It and Alan, Alan is not. I hope Alan tells the truth. Alan, are you gonna treat a girl who, or are you gonna have the same view if you're dating a girl who tells you, hey? You may think she's cool or whatever, but then she tells you, hey, I was a porn star. Are, is, are you going to run to bring that girl home to mom? Uh, no, but that's not, but that doesn't have to do with me treating her a specific way. Right. I mean, that's the difference. Like, just because I may not see a future with someone doesn't mean I have to disrespect them. There's a big gray area between that. 
Alan, if you were dating a porn star, because you, now we're talking you are about not going to be out there like, yo, this is my... Alan, I know you. If you're dating a porn star, you're not going to be out I'm there. Not dating a porn star. That doesn't have to do with anything with... No, no. I can tell you, if you were dating a porn star, you're not going to sit there taking selfies with her on Instagram saying like, yo, this is my this is my girl. You're not going to do that. I, but wow, we're not, I'm not dating a porn star. Think? But we're not talking about dating. Of course. Yes, Giovanni. Uh, yes, tell the truth. No, yes. no, it's the truth because I truth. hear it all the time, but I well, didn't I, know. I, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't hear I that. Thought, I thought somebody was lying to me, but that's true. Yo, t- <laughs> she's like, is, is 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 that how men think? Yes, dudes don't want their girl out there like that. Well, let's not put a let's not a put let's not put a blanket on it. It's a lot of dudes who it's a lot of dudes who meet women too. Women too. Women don't no, want. I'm to saying, I know. I know a lot of dudes who meet these women, whether it be a, a stripper or a porn star. They would love to save them and take them out of the game. Well, marry them. Yes, mm-hmm. like it's a thing. Like people, it's like a savior complex they call. It. So it's not a scarcity as the, of those men. It, that's all. that's that's called plenty sim culture. Yes, it's sim culture. But there's plenty of them, and we know that there is. Oh, of you, course. Okay, so it's not like these, these women are covered. Simp, simp, Giovanni, simp, being a oh, simp. Oh. Yeah, there's no shortage of men that would. You know the Claim dudes me. that go on a date with you, like Javon. Javon, how you doing? Um, um, can I take you out? Can I take you out to um, What's take you out to dinner? And, and you be like, oh. no. you be like, no. And then he be like, ah, right, you know, I just uh, good, good morning, queen. Good, good, good morning. <laughs> you know the dudes is sending oh you text my, messages. Y'all gotta cut it out. Y'all know Javon is like, oh, I know who that. That's Marcus. She know exactly. <laughs> Leave them alone. Look, look, yes, the ones who's in your the uh, sunken place in your DMs. That's exactly right. who who are who are the simps who are very oh, much at your beck and call. Attention, just move on and stop texting her. Go you say what? I said I don't understand why guys do that. If you're not getting that attention back, if you're not getting entertained, just leave. Go to someone else's DM. She's not writing you back, dog. No, no, that is a lie because simps don't believe in that. What Sims believe is, it could, you ever watch Angels in the Outfield? No. <laughs> Where he says it, it could happen. So Sims believe in one day. It's like in the lottery. It's like the lottery, right? People play the lottery. Why? Because they're like, yo, it's going to get rich. They know that they're just wasting money, but you're just putting a coin in the slot machine and you're just hoping that one day she's going to be like, you're going to catch her slipping or the man that she's with just did something. She's like, you know what? I, I, I'm gonna turn a new leaf, and I want to talk to him for a second, and that's what happens. So since so since so since believe since are the most optimistic per- people. Uh oh, oh, we got that quarantine thing. Uh oh, uh oh. But anyway, yo, let's let's move, move on to the next to the next one. But I will say this: there's a lot of folks uh, speaking of Cardi B. A lot of folks that were upset about when we talk about credentials, right? And we talk about interview. A lot of folks were upset that Joe Biden and Cardi B had that interview. They were upset that Cardi B got the opportunity to have that interview with Joe Biden. I will say this, right? Um, I'm not mad at Cardi B because Cardi B has she has a following, and right now Joe Biden's campaign is like, hey, if you have a following, I don't care. Um, I just want to reach as many people that maybe won't vote. I want to, I want to reach them. I get that. Right. However, um, I don't like the fact that Cardi B, you have a lot of independent journalists that are out there who have credentials, who work their entire lives to <laughs> want to have that opportunity to speak with Joe Biden. And I'm not just talking about myself because we, entire we're out there. They work their entire life. Giovanni went to school. Giovanni went to, Giovanni went to <laughs> The body didn't know that all she needed to do was just put out some WAP out there, and she would have got it. She would have got that interview with Joe Biden. There's a lot of people that work hard, and I don't like the fact that Cardi B, who's not black, can act like she's some journalist and and speak to issues that affect the black community. And I and it's almost it's almost offensive for them to think that. Oh my goodness! I did an interview. With, he did an interview with Cardi B. Well, guess what? I we just all need to go. It's over. We just need to go and vote for Joe Biden. So I hope that um, his campaign realizes that that there are other traditional media outlets. And, and plus, that interview was safe. Cardi B's not going to ask him any uh, tough questions that's going to really trip up Joe Biden. 
So he's he he got more out of that interview than she did. I promise you that, because he wants to reach her. He wants to reach her base. Um, I would just like to note that uh, Cardi B is Dominican and Trinidadian. Okay, I just wanted to mention that. Just in case you didn't. I she was oh, black. Are we, are we? Are we? See, and this is what I, this yeah, race, no, this we, racial. We should get into that right now. With this racial ambiguity uh, conversation, I'm so sick and tired. I'm so sick and tired of it. Like it's it's. I'm, tr I'm both of my parents are Trinidadian, right? So I'm Trin I'm Trinidadian, but I'm not a foundational Black American, right? That's 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 a that's a fact. So I've been here, but my culture is not necessarily is not a foundational black american culture there is a, there is a difference you see what i'm saying so there need to be and that's the whole conversation with with, Kam, with kamala harris and my problem with people with this racial ambiguity is blackness is not a game of double dutch where you could just hop in and out of your damn blackness when it benefits you when you're around, when you're over here, oh, I'm a Latina, I'm this and this and this and that. And then when it's convenient for you, oh, I'm bliggity black, 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 when you want to sell some stuff. And then when you're over here, you racially am, uh, am, uh, uh, ambiguous. It doesn't work that way. And I think that's the conversation why people get upset with Cardi B or Kamala Harris or whatever when people are like, wait, you are only black when you're when it's convenient. You see what I'm saying? Like me, I'm black, right? I'm black straight up all, you know, all the time, unapologetically black. I, I can't switch and turn off and be like, there are dudes who are my, who are my complexion <laughs> that was in there like, no, I'm Dominican. I'm Dominican today. Like, I'm, I'm, it, there, there's dudes that do that. There's dudes that like, as long, if they got some, there's dudes that do that. Like, oh, no, I'm Dominican. It's okay. No say. No, 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 no say. I'm not, I, I'm Dominican. Okay, Poppy. I'm Dominican. I don't do that. I'm, I'm, I'm black. You see what I'm saying? I, I've only been in Trinidad since I was, when I was three. But this is what I know. I know black culture. I study. I respect it. But when we devalue blackness so much that we allow to anybody, Rachel Dozel decides, you know what? One day, I ah, yeah, fuck it. I'm gonna be black. Like when we devalue blackness so much that anybody decides, uh, well, we'll just move the goalposts when it's convenient. Like that's a real conversation. Kamala Harris has gone yeah, out. That conversational. I never yes. really thought about it though. I never thought about it because I've always considered. Um, Anybody from like the Caribbean family or islands, like if, if they have that root in them, I always I've always considered them to yeah. be of some type of black ancestry. So no, uh, no, no. They have you have black, but it's how you but I know, but I'm saying I identify. never thought about the fact mm -hmm. that I can only be black. Like that's it. Like I can't mm -hmm. really be anything else. Like that's it. I'm always black. Every yeah. Day. Yeah, or, it's it's what you I is what you identify as when when you have and the problem with, with Kamala Harris is that when she's done in, in it, well, the reason why I believe that when people question whether or not her how she identifies with her with with blackness is because when you are when you go on to certain platforms and you're like are you Indian and she's like yes I'm I'm Indian I'm 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 Indian okay and then she runs as oh I was Indian I'm Indian I'm Indian and then when it's convenient, when they want the black vote, it's like, oh, I'm a sister girl, blakey black, 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 HBCU, uh, divine nine, alpha, kappa, alpha. I'm, I'm black. I'm black now. I'm real black. That's what people have a problem with. And I think it's, it's they should, fair though. to have that conversation. They should, but it's, it's good to but have that conversation. But do we create those narratives? If, if you live both experiences, if you have an Indian parent and a black parent, and you've lived with, within both cultures, why should someone pick? No, because it's you. It's doing it when it's convenient. That's the problem, right? But convenient now, say, according to who? If I have an Indian, if I have an Indian uh, um, company saying, "Hey, listen, I understand that you're half Indian. Would you like to come mm -hmm. and speak on behalf of us?" Yes, I live the Indian culture life. Mm -hmm. Am I am I supposed to be like, no? I just spoke at the Indian convention. I can't speak at the Black convention, even though I'm half Black and I know that experience too. Even though no, I understand that there's a difference. When you're hundred percent something and you are mixed, yes, mm -hmm, absolutely. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you can't strip people's culture away from them because yeah, they have yeah. more than one. Yeah, that's it's not true. stripping the culture. It's not stripping the culture. It's telling or you like, it, or like you say, they're it's not, it's not, it's not, no one's asking. Asking. What No, no one's asking you to choose. It's just like when see, here's the thing: when it comes to blackness, there's a lot of folks, right? Especially within other cultures, when you. A lot of these other cultures have these have this colorism within their own cultures, 
right? Every 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 culture does. Co- correct, correct, right? So even sense. even in, right. even in West Indian even in West Indian cultures, there are some Trinidadians or some Jamaicans who, if you call them black, they get really offended, and they can have the same skin, skin complexion. Like that yeah. Exactly. So there are people that when you sit there and be like, "Yo, are you are you black?" Like, nah, nah, nah. It's the it's the oh when it benefits you now. Now you want to represent. Now you want to be a part of us. Now you want to identify with our struggle. That's the problem that people have. Not about whether you have two cultures, whether you have a blended family, whatever. It's that, or or if you're married to a white husband, it's that double dutch shit where you just like, oh, okay, I'm black, I'm black. You want to hop in, hop in a little bit, and then next thing you know, oh, it's getting a little hot out here. Oh, uh, I'm sorry, I am I am Indian now, and it's like, but there are. People like Javon, you don't have that luxury. You see what I'm saying? Like other people don't have that have that luxury. But Just, is that a, could that be a a benefit, like a, a extra blessing that you know, or a, something that they were just blessed with? You you can do both for them for them, but not yeah, when you're trying to, but not when you're trying to represent and advocate up on issues on behalf of the people. Okay, you see what I'm saying? Like if I just said, that, like for instance, like it should be offensive that. Or Rachel Dolezal, who will be like, "Well, I identify as black." That should be oh, offensive. That's, that's crazy. That should be identified. That should be for for any for anybody, right? And she's not half. She's not nothing. She just. But people. But the thing is, people people bag on the Rock. The Rock don't big up his African American heritage at all. He every time you talk about Rock, you talk about yo, I'm Samoan. My Samoan heritage. My Samoan this was. If if the Rock runs for president and all of a sudden he's nation of domination, bliggity black, 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 the Rock, people will have some questions. Could it be like, brother? Where were you? Where were you when we was going through all of this stuff? Where were you? Where were you? And I think when it comes to politicians, we want to make sure it's not about your necessarily your blackness. It's like, yo, do you have our best interests at hand? Because you will sit there and get black votes. You want black people to rally around you. You want black people to support you. But then when you get up into these rooms, you're just like, oh no, I'm, I am I mean, I'm black, but I'm not, I mean, I'm Indian. I'm telling you this by experience. People do this, politicians do this. And, and black people in their communities are tired of people just sitting there acting as if they represent or they are for you. And then after and they're left holding the bag. I think that's where the frustration comes in. Now. Do I say that it's it's warranted, the conversation is warranted, right, for people to ask the question. What I feel is offensive is when people have those questions and then we got folks in black folks like, we ain't got to worry about all that. Don't worry about all that. We just got, you just got to fall in line. That's dismissive. And, and, and that also affects the, the get out to vote. When you're dismissive of people that have questions, and that's what we do here. We have questions, right? And we allow you the opportunity to ask to answer those questions, and then and then tell you and tell your side and and, and prod you with, with the, those questions. But I'll be damned if anybody's gonna be like, "Yo, you can't ask this or whatever," or "Oh, oh, you just need to sit down somewhere, just go ahead." Oh, who do you want, Trump? That ain't got nothing to do with it. Trump. Ain't got nothing to do with whether or not you're gonna identify and be for my people. It's the same in the same breath. It's like when we tell people, "Hey, I want." Um, we want to make sure that someone has an actual unapologetic uh, agenda, uh, like a black uh, black agenda. What are you going to do specifically for black people? Kamala Harris is on an interview saying, am I going to do something specifically for black people? No. So when people, so now that you bleep black, black, HBCU, all this other stuff that they're trying to package you around, and we understand mm-hmm. it's, it's politics, it's, you have to understand this is why people have those questions then they're just like yo let me check your credentials because black look i can't people who are light-skinned can't just be going out there and saying white oh like whiteness is protected right whiteness is yeah. has a, is a is in a gated community whiteness is if you have if you're white you have to, they check who you are they check it's like you take check your credit score whatever but when it comes to blackness and when it comes to our culture whether it's hip hop whether it's whatever that we produce blackness is almost like a revolve is like a a, a revolving door like everybody has free access Miley Cyrus can just decide, oh, I don't want to do country music anymore. Let me go over here and, and, and black it up and then try to do all the twerking and have a little fun. And then as soon as she's done and she's making her money, then I'm going to go ahead and be like, all right, I'm out. Um, Hip hop is misogynistic. I don't want to do nothing with that. So that's why people, we have to, 
you know, I implore everybody to 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 guard your blackness, to harness your blackness, to be empowered by your blackness, um, and make sure that people people cherish it. And I think that's where the national conversation is really going. When it was like we can't afford to have another symbolic person in a high position because that's not going to do something specifically for black Americans who are out here being slaughtered on a daily on a daily basis and being subjugated. So now that you're telling me that you're black, okay, are you really for me? Did you do you really identify with me or my struggle, or do you only or do you only identify when it's when it's beneficial to you because we want to check your policies? What that's it? I don't think there's anything wrong with that. That's just me. Agree, agree, and that's what that'll actually be a longer conversation. I know we got some other shit to get to, but yeah. but we have <laughs> that's a good segue. We have sent out an invitation, so uh, Vice President Joe Biden or uh, Vice Presidential nominee Kamala Harris, you are welcome on the soapbox. We've had a plethora of politicians on the soapbox, Congresswomen. So um, yeah, we'll see. <laughs> I'm sure I'm sure we'll be at the top of the list after this episode. <laughs> but um. So that's the takeaways. Uh, let's go. Uh, Alan, tell us about what's going on with Jam Master J. Oh, man. Uh, first and foremost, uh, rest in peace, Jam Master J. Uh, we lost him almost two, two decades ago, uh, going on 18 years this year. So we don't have too many details, but there were two gentlemen who were finally arrested in his case. If you guys don't know, Jam Master J was shot at his studio in Queens. 18 years ago, and there has been no arrest made until now. Uh, these two gentlemen were suspects for a long time, but now the state feels that they have enough to actually convict them. So recently, uh, they were arrested. So, you know, the family says that they're a little bit convicted, you know, uh, naturally, because uh, anytime that uh, a loved one passed, they say time heals all wounds, and it's kind of like they do have to relive all of this by going through the case and, mm. and dealing with uh, dealing with the gentlemen who are sus uh, are suspected to do this crime. So, you know, we're just going to keep the Jam Master J family in prayers. Um, you know, regardless of whatever the outcome is, let's just hope that the correct people be brought to justice, and uh, you know, we can finally get a little bit of closure to this. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Rest in peace, to Jam Master J. Uh, I was shocked, actually. I was like, damn, I didn't know they were still working on the... Me neither. On, on, I mean, on the case. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's good to see that they didn't just kind of... Uh, often we see in, in, in cases like this, especially in hip-hop, they just kind of disregard it and sweep it under the rug and we don't get the killer. So I was also um, glad to see that they were being a little bit proactive with this. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt, no doubt. I like this episode. We've been we've been really chopping it up. I mean, we're getting some, uh, some good... Uh, some some blood some blood blood. Just say you okay? I feel like you're a little mad at me for the 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 women conversation. Were we good? Are we good? Straight. Don't worry. We good. <laughs> no, I'm just fucking I'm messing with you. Um, yes. I'm trying to think of where we're going. Oh, I have a story here. Uh, looks like uh, Flint residents are going to receive six hundred million dollars from the state of Michigan. Uh, hopefully they can uh, fix the. As you guys know, the Flint water water crisis. So hopefully they can go out there, fix the Flint, uh, the water, get new pipes, so that the people up there can uh, to get can get some new some get some good water and uh, make sure that the environment and all the people are up there. There's some good people up there. I, I drove a truck up there to Flint to give them some some supplies and uh, for the water relief. So I'm happy that they got this uh, 600 million. For some reason, I feel like it should be more um, that they should be getting, and, and the fact that it's 2020, and they're now getting this money where you have children that are affected. Shout out to uh, Mari Kopany, who is uh, Little Miss Flint, who's been a young activist uh, up there, uh, who's been championing this cause since she was very small. I remember meeting Mari when we came with the truck, pulled up, opened the truck with all the water and the supplies, and here she comes with her little wagon from her, from her house, and she had this little basket. And so, uh, yeah, so shout out to Mari, I definitely should get her back on the show, uh, her and her mom, uh, to uh, to talk about what's going on out there in Flint. I think that would definitely be uh, a good uh, a good episode. Uh, let me see, uh, Jay, you good with your story? Um, on the feelings of voting rights. Yes, go ahead. Talk talk to us. Um, 
So pretty much just to update people on what's going on in Florida right now, for the first time in <clears throat> um, years, what many would say Jim Crow era, um, mm -hmm. felons have, or felons, ex-felons are um, gaining the right to Mm -hmm. vote actually um a lot of them voted for the first time this august primary um mm -hmm. after the passage of amendment four <clears throat> in 2018 that restored ex felons voting rights um or i'll say returning citizens or people with past convictions um yeah and uh yeah it's, it's just a testimony you know to what people are having to go to to even um be a part of democracy still to um have to prove what the 14th amendment stands for was constitutional was not unconstitutional to even have the conversation on just because you commit a felony then all of a sudden you don't have a fundamental right to have a voice that matters in an election yeah. um and so all of that is happening right now we don't you know want want to forget it or not even be in the fight for it um in florida people are pushing and fighting hard to have a voice um and that actually um the amendment is in court right now again amendment four is back in court the 11th circuit court of appeals in atlanta they're arguing whether requiring felons to pay legal financial obligations is constitutional or is it a poll tax because you're requiring people to pay of course the yeah. state the governor is arguing it's not a poll tax because um felons don't have a fundamental right to vote and plaintiffs in the case are of course arguing you're pretty much telling us that we can't vote because we're poor because we don't have the money to pay back our all our court fines fees try to reinstate our license try to you know pay off tickets and all that type of stuff because they're making them pay all of that anything that's related court wise and you had a felony you got to pay all of that before you try to have your um register your uh restoration of voting rights so yeah oh, yeah, and shout out to uh, Florida Rights Restoration Coalition. Yeah, definitely. They, I think uh, the people there, their leadership, they Ooh. dropped like $2 million to pay up some of the court fees and costs to some of these uh, uh, returning citizens who, who, wanted to, uh, who wanted to vote and they were able to vote uh, for the Florida primary. So uh, LeBron James has donated $100,000. So this is a concerted effort um, for people who are just like, look, you know, the right to vote. Um, and I always tell people, it's not about, oh, go ahead and just vote. Like we're not, you shouldn't vote out of fear. You shouldn't vote out of just tradition. You are voting for something, right? And anybody who tells you to just vote and fall in line with whether it's party lines or just because is lying to you. And that's not what I'll, I'll never tell anybody to do that, to just, oh, you just gotta vote because no, it's, it's our responsibility to make sure that we educate you as much as possible on the issues and then you decide what you want to do with your right to vote right so um but telling you to vote because somebody died or some people some people sacrificed yes they did but those people didn't have the right to vote right they want they they fought they died they sacrificed for the right not so that they can just go ahead and say all right you to force you to vote no it's for the opportunity uh, to vote. So yeah, so I think um, making sure that returning citizens have that right, because I don't believe in tax, no taxation without representation. If you can't, if you can't have any representation or any say so in your representation, then why the hell are you being Why taxed? am I paying taxes? Why are you out here paying, why are you out here paying taxes in, in all these different things? So um, yeah, a, a lot of work, you know, we definitely need to do a lot more education to educating people uh, on this platform about returning citizens. And I'm sure that there are a lot of people who are even listening to us that have people that are affected, uh, if they have felonies, whatever. It's it's tough out there. And I believe, I'm one of those people that believe, yo, once you did your time, you should be able to return and have an opportunity to make your, to make your life, uh, to make your life better and have some sort of, uh, uh, to be rejuvenated or rehabilitation is rather what I'm talking about. Anybody, y'all have something to add? Negative. Not with this one. No, okay. All right. Bet. Listen, y'all. Um I I want to say I think we got some of these other stories that we had. Uh of course you guys know Steve Bannon was indicted. Steve Bannon was indicted on fraud charges for uh alleged fundraising schemes. So basically I'm conflicted because Steve Bannon, 
basically took, uh, and I have, <laughs> I have it here, and I don't mean to laugh, but I, I, I try not to. It's hard for me to care about the quote unquote victims of this story because it says that Steve Bannon um, created a, a sham of a nonprofit and shell and, and the companies felt um, funneled over $1 million in donations to the We Build the Wall Fund, an online crowdfunding campaign that raised over $25 million to erect a privately funded version of the wall. So basically, Steve Bannon, who is a staunch, he was the architect of the Make America Great Again. He's a staunch white supremacist. This white supremacist schemed other white supremacists out of their money because they wanted to build a wall and he schemed them out and now he's indicted on federal charges. So this is one of those things that I say, that's not my fight, which might be a new segment in this on our podcast of news where I say, that's not my fight. I don't want to be in a fight with the, the white supremacists. When I will watch the fight between Steve Bannon being indicted and the white supremacists who lost their uh, who lost their mo- uh, their money uh, from the scam with the same type of attention that I watched the WAP video. I just want to watch like this, real close, and just in, and then just enjoy the flames. I I enjoy it. I hope he I hope he goes to jail, and I also hope they never get their money back. I think it's um uh I mean it's sad and it's amazing that. Everyone who started the presidential campaign with Trump is in jail or has been in jail within these four within these four terms. Like it's yeah. like the list is absolutely nuts. So I think, and he keeps saying they were spying on my campaign, fam. You had a dozen of criminals working around you for various different offenses. Like it's this is not even the same thing. Like every everybody got their hands in different pop uh, pots of illegality. Like. You shouldn't bring yeah. that up. We should have been spying on your campaign. If we were. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, it's it's one of those things like, hey, you <laughs> you got your, your hand caught in the cookie jar. You was trying to be racist with your donation. You right. was trying to block other people from coming into the country to have an opportunity to have the quote unquote the American, the American dream. And because you you bought into racist principle and God turned around and not only did you lose your money. But the person who sold you that dream of make America great again uh, swindled you out of that money. And now he's being indicted. I know better than to get in the way of God's work when I see it. And this is the hand of God. I see it. I hope nobody wins. Nobody should win in this situation. Yes, I know you hate. Yes, I know you hate. I know you hate Trump. What do you think about this? Because someone told me something like if Biden wins, what if he appoints Hillary as his attorney general and then she goes after Trump on some charges? Good. <laughs> that would be very nice. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. Uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, and then other than that, uh, we had mm, the Toronto Raptors GM. Um, shout out to that brother. I forget his name. Mas- Masai Ujiri. Right, it was the GM, I believe it was the GM or basketball operations uh, of the Toronto, uh, Toronto Raptors who won the NBA championship last year. This guy went to go on to the NBA floor after he, the Toronto Raptors were about to win the championship in, in, uh, at Oracle Arena. And so before he was, uh, he was sued because they said he assaulted a police officer. However, however, uh, the, um, the officer the officer was, uh, the body cam footage of the officer came out. And so Messiah uh, Ujiri uh, got pushed by the officer twice before Messiah Ujiri even touched the officer. So uh, Messiah Ujiri is going to go ahead and sue the officer, go ahead and sue the police department as he should. So this is one of those things where we say, look at God, don't get in the way of God's work. Okay. And so now that there's body cam footage, uh, he's going to be, uh, he's vindicated, I believe. So yeah. those are, yeah, go ahead. And uh, well, he just put out a statement today. I thought it was extremely elegant, uh, extremely well said. It's just to kind of, to sum it up, essentially he was like, listen, uh, still nigga, you know, it don't matter mm-hmm. what you do. He's the, he's the president GM of literally the champions of the world. And he got treated like anyone else. Uh, you know, he also mentioned that he was fortunate enough to have the money and the resources to be vindicated but he understands that a lot of people don't have those same resources and he brought it back around to Black Lives Matter. So shout out to him for 
uh, not shutting up, taking a stand, fighting yeah. it tooth and nail. So uh, shout out my man. We trying to get him over to the Knicks. We're not going to talk about that. Whew, all right. Allen, Allen's got like allen has got like five teams in the NBA. Just two. Just two. Just five. Just five. Just, just two. And they're in the same division. <laughs> you what, know, what would you ever do if the Knicks play the Orlando Magic in the NBA Finals? Me in the uh, Eastern Conference Finals. First off, his mind you, I've been a fan. Well, just you, a Knicks fan too. Always. For I've yeah. been a fan of these teams for twenty plus years. They've never been good at the same time. So I don't even think about shit like that. <laughs> Didn't like the NBA, ever, for, ever, I know we were dating the show, but but didn't the NBA lottery isn't that tonight? I don't want to talk about it. Oh wait, did, who got number one? Uh, I don't know, but I know the Knicks got number eight. That's look at God. And we look, so, look at God. Until that guy, until your owner, <laughs> until your owner sells that team, ain't nothing right going to be done. <laughs> Because until you do right by Charles Oakley, ain't nothing gonna be right gonna be done to the Knicks. That team is cursed. Charles, o- Charles Oakley is not what I mean. You know, he was cool, but he'd be talking too slick about Patrick Patrick Ewing, and that's what my that's what that's what my loyalty lies. So mm-hmm. he's a band until he makes it right with my son Pat Ewing. All right, all right. Well, we do this every every episode. Let's go around the horn. More of the story, Giovanni. What's the more of the story? Ooh. The moral of the story for me um, would be to speak your truth um, and also, you know, don't get offended if somebody doesn't necessarily want to work with you or do stuff with you. Just keep doing you. Make sure that your business is solid and um, be an advocate for what you are worth and what you're presenting. Absolutely. Hey, uh, Alan, what's your moral of the story? Moral of the story is... Y'all know what it is. Wash your hands, wear a face mask, uh, go Orlando Magic, and uh, stay black. <laughs> Jesse, what's your moral of the story? Uh, my moral of the story is going to be a little different from everybody else's, and it's basically <laughs> drink your water, eat your fruit, but I walk. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you said what's the last part? What, which one? You said drink your water, eat your fruit, and then what? I'm sorry? For that walk. Oh, for that. That. For, for that. Oh, oh, okay. Well, my moral, my more. I'm, we're team WAP. I don't want anybody. Listen, my moral little story is we're team WAP over here. Okay, I don't want y'all to think that we are not team WAP Sorry. over on this side. There's a time and a place for some for some WAP. Speaking of that, my moral little story is this: We have been working really hard on with the soapbox, and whether it's our personal lives, professional lives, we're gonna be off next week. TJ, I'm going on vacation, um, but we want. I do. Before we do that, I want to thank everybody who's supported us through uh, this transition. Uh, we made a lot of great connections this go round. This, I guess you would call this season, with uh, it's a lot of guests, different guest contributors. Thank you to all of our guest contributors. We'll have more. Uh, we're gonna take a week off, but we will be back bigger, better than ever, refreshed. I'm sure I'll have some stories. I'll be out. Beachfront, oceanfront, uh, doing my thing with a straw. I got myself a Hawaiian shirt. I'm gonna get real ignorant. I have a big, uh, comfy robe I bought. This is gonna be real, yeah. It's just we all need pictures. I'm good. right? Oh, oh, trust me, I, I definitely hot tub everything. So, oh, y'all, no. it, it might get real exclusive. Okay. Uh, y'all follow me on Instagram at Legacy Cold World. Uh, but really, I just wanted to thank everybody. Make sure I'm not gonna let anything stop us. We're you know, we're gonna continue on this squad to tell the truth. And if you are someone who wants to speak truth, if you are a truth teller, uh, our platform is open. Uh, and we're always gonna continue to tell the truth, speak the truth and uh, make it do what it do. We're the Soapbox. I'm very proud of you guys. Uh, Alan, Jesse, uh, Giovanni, I'm very extremely fucking proud of each and every one of you for sticking by my side, sticking with us as this Soapbox is is growing. It is growing. It is working. Um, and we're doing it organically. But we're not, you know, there are times where I thought I need to have a sexy <clears throat> calendar on our Instagram to get more to get more views. Like this thought, I, I almost took out the baby oil to just oil myself up or whatever so that we can get more views. But but we're gonna do it. We're gonna do it. <laughs> We're gonna like too much. You, you, but you did it in the sleazy way. We're gonna do it. The, we're gonna do it the organic way. Um, but yes, I'm very proud. I'm happy with the direction we're on. I'm glad that we're using our platform for 
uh, political, uh, social political awareness. And yo, look forward to having fun. Fun, fun, fun. So fun. for, for Alan, for Jesse, for Giovanni, this is the Soapbox Podcast. We are the truth tellers. See you in two weeks. Peace. Peace.